high maintenance over here. Not at all. <laughs> Don't listen to him. You do get a rear camera washer. Nice. Uh, yeah, so cool. that's standard. And that's even more important if you're going to be going off road or just being rugged. Welcome to Everyday Reviews. I'm Brian. I'm Cynthia. Today we have the brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE. And Cynthia, what's different about this one? Uh, it has a plug. Yes, this is the plug-in hybrid version. It's the most capable Grand Cherokee ever. And this happens to be the Trailhawk edition. Let's see. All right, we are in the 4xE Grand Cherokee. This is Cynthia's very first time even very sitting first. in this vehicle. Off we go so far. What do you think, Cynthia? So quiet. For the car like this size and so muscular, I was expecting something really loud. Yeah, well, we're in electric mode right now. We're gonna talk about the different drive modes in a little bit, but yeah, it is completely silent. We're going up this hill right now and it's just like, it's pretty awesome right now. So why do you like SUVs so much? SUV, always first thing to me is the height. I always like to sit up higher and then the view is much better. And of course, also the size, something bigger. And then with lots of space, really good for our family audience activities. And then one thing to me is also important. Always I like something premium. Premium, of course, you know. <laughs> High maintenance over here. Not at all. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Okay, but yeah, well, who doesn't like premium? And you know, Jeep over the last few years have really uh, been just bumping up and cranking out more and more luxurious and premium products. And it really shows uh, in this Grand Cherokee for sure. This is the Trailhawk. You know, we have they have different leather seats and different trims. Uh, this has leather seats with suede inserts. We have a leather steering wheel, heated seats front and back, ventilated seats here. We do have the option of the large panel roof here. Uh, it feels really premium. You got lots of power adjustments, folding mirrors, uh, memory seats. And then, of course, we got lots of screens. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah. All different sizes too. There are three screens, a 10.25 inch in instrument cluster. Then you have a 10.1 inch uh, standard infotainment screen that comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and you do have Android Auto. You get all the latest and greatest apps, off-road pages, um, all your information for your hybrid system and of course lots of cameras so uh, depending on what package you get you can get the surround camera highly recommend it, especially if you're going to go off-roading you can get all different views from the outside and what i like even if you don't get the surround camera you do get a rear camera washer uh, nice. yeah so that's oh. standard and that's even more important if you're going to be going off-road or just being rugged where that camera is going to get some muck on it you can just spray it down with the washer uh yeah so Right there in front of you, you have a passenger screen. Uh, we saw this first in the Grand Wagoneer and also the Porsche Taycan. I remember that was my first time. Now, I can't see it. There's there's like a it's like a polarized glass. From this angle, I can't see it. I it's only for the boss. It's only it's only for the <laughs> boss in the passenger seat. Uh, but yeah, so you can you can control different things like the the audio. You can also hook a source to it. So you want to you know hook a fire stick or something to the HDMI. You can do that uh, if you want screens in the back you can get them it's going to cost you about twenty six hundred dollars for the rear seat entertainment package but it is available and if we were to buy it of course with the two kids they would definitely fight to sit in the front so we'd have to put in the back and get them the for sure the uh, the entertainment systems for the rear connectivity i love how there are so many options you have uh, type a and type c usbs 
you have that HDMI that I talked about, you have uh, 115 volt inverters here, so you can plug, so, you know, some low, you know, like not high demanding electronics in here. Uh, and yeah, so lots of options. And if you have a lot of people and gear and you can't really see out the back, you do have an electronic mirror. I really like that feature. Uh, you're seeing it on more and more vehicles right now. Yeah, so, okay, Cynthia, what's your take on the interior here? Just like you said, there are a lot of premium touch in here and I'm surprised I'm sitting right in the Jeep right now. Yeah, Cynthia does not have a lot of exposure into the Jeep world and mainly she thinks of Jeeps as big, huge off-road vehicles, oh, <laughs> super capable, not these luxurious premium riding vehicles that, that they've been out with lately. However, just because they're luxurious and have all this technology does not mean that they're not capable. There's that badge on the outside. This is trail rated. So this is a fully capable Jeep. It's fully capable for off-road. This Trailhawk has even additional features. But let's talk about what is powering this and that's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder and that's matched to the PHEV system. So we have an electric motor and combined you get 375 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. This comes with a 17 kilowatt hour battery, which is just underneath us. And the charging is quite quick. So you do have a built in 7.2 kilowatt charger. And with the level two that we plugged into our house, this was basically fully charged from zero in just over like two hours and 20 something minutes, which is pretty good. Uh, if you just plug it into a regular house, home outlet, it's gonna run you about 16 hours though, <clears throat> but still not too bad. Range wise, we're looking at 41 kilometers or that's 25 miles uh, of electric only range. So you have three different drive modes. You have hybrid, which is going to operate um, automatically to maximize your efficiency. So it's gonna use the gasoline engine and the electric uh, motor at the same time. You have EV or just EV electric. Only? Yeah, that's yeah. what we're on right now. And we're just purely on electric. And we're going up hills here, no issue zero issue at all and that gas engine is not kicking on at all and then the third option is e-save so if you want to save your electricity maybe you want to use this for four by four for the electricity you can save it or maybe you're, you're going to be in bumper to bumper traffic you can put that save on as well so how this works so this system is it actually has an electric motor just on the output of the gasoline engine so it's not like an electric motor in the rear or, or or the front how some other systems work this is going through an eight-speed automatic transmission and it's not using a cvt or a direct drive it's going through the drive the drive shaft itself which is really nice it feels like a traditional uh, regular jeep except it's really quiet plus you get the the benefit of the different ratios of gearing and uh, yeah so but the 41 kilometers by the way that's under full ideal conditions okay. for sure so i took it for a couple drives and i ran out the battery and one time i got it as low as just about just under 30 kilometers so it's not as much as 41 but i was mainly doing highway driving over 100 kilometers an hour plus i had the heat on and the heated seats and stuff. And this does have electric heat, which is a really nice thing. It's just really nice because like some of the other PHEV products that we've tested, uh, some of them, even if you're in EV mode, when you start it up on a cold morning, it's still going to kick on that gas engine. It's going to burn gas. Even if you're doing short trips, this one is just staying straight in electric. And another thing is once you're in electric mode or whatever mode you're in, and you get out you turn your car off and you get back in it defaults back to the same mode which is also another bonus too so if you want to keep it in electric mode every time just have that selected and it's going to do that this 4xe is no slouch considering the size of it the weight of it it'll make a run to 60 miles an hour in just six seconds it's pretty quick and if you want to tow with this though you do have a reduced towing capacity on this compared to the non 4 by e so you get 6,000 pounds of maximum towing on here so if you need more you're going to have to get into the regular uh, grand cherokee got it 
fuel economy, of course, it's gonna be really good. If you are driving less than 40 kilometers a day, well, you're not gonna burn any fuel, but just on gasoline alone, combined, you're gonna run 10 liters per 100 kilometers, which is eh, pr pretty decent. Mm -hmm. And once again, if you, combine that with the, the savings you're going to get from the electric only, it's going to really increase. It all depends how much you're going to drive. Jeep says you can actually travel up to 761 kilometers on just gas alone with this new Grand Cherokee 4xe. All Grand Cherokees come standard with all-wheel drive. However, the Trailhawk comes with the standard Quadra Drive 2 4x4 system. And along with the standard 18-inch wheels with all-terrain tires, this thing is pretty well unstoppable. Well, I'm just going by what I've heard because we didn't take it off-road. But, you know, this is just like when we just tested the, 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 the Defender. These are very capable vehicles and we just have nowhere to test them off-road. I know. Yeah. I, I know. Like, I really wish that we could make this go off-road. But this uh, Trailhawk also has a sway bar disconnect. What we'd find on the Rubicon and the Wrangler. So if you want the most amount of articulation, you can disconnect that, that uh, sway bar, which is pretty awesome for an SUV to do that, right? Mm -hmm. This also has a two-speed transfer case and an electronic limited rear slip differential so it can direct 100% of available torque to either rear wheel if you really need the traction. So yeah, totally capable. Plus, we can actually raise this vehicle up. We got different off-road modes as well. And we can just manually raise it up or lower it down because we have standard air suspension on this as well. And you get almost 12 inches of clearance by the way if you're concerned about the batteries there well the batteries are sealed completely sealed and you could actually go and wade this vehicle up to 24 inches of water which is pretty amazing and they're also protected by skid plates as well so they've got you pretty well pretty, covered yeah pretty protected yeah I don't know how to shift those wheels this way, that way, but sounds really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Jeep, if you're listening, if you have any type of event here that we can uh, go and put this to the test, drop us a message. We just had the Range Rover Defender. That was the 138 passenger though, but if we compared it to the five passenger, Cynthia, which one do you prefer? Well, I like how fancy this one looks, and I uh, also love the option of electric system. So I'm probably leaning over to the Jeep on this. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, the, I, I did like the Defender, don't get me yeah. wrong. You know, it, it just has, a, it's a different, it's a different vehicle. They're both almost equally as capable. This one might be a little bit more, well, especially with that sway bar disconnect, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, you're, you mentioned this has a PHEV system. Love that. I don't know if that's going to come to the Defender. They have it for the Range Rover. So maybe you will see that uh, eventually. But yeah, that's just the interior is just a little bit, um, the, the Defender is really rugged looking, you know, get those exposed rivets. And that, I like that too. So it's, it's, a, it's a really tough call. I think this gives you a more, for everyday driving, I think this, this is a more comfortable mm -hmm. vehicle for sure for every day. So what's it going to cost you to get into a Grand Cherokee 4xe in this Trailhawk trim here? Well, it starts at $79,000. If you add on some other packages like this has with the panel roof, you got the hands-free power tailgate, the surround view cameras, uh, things like that, it's going to bump it up to just under $85,000. So not inexpensive. If you want even more luxury, you can go into the Summit Reserve, which is the top of the line. It's gonna give you lots of updated things like headliners and different leather for the seats and stuff. That's gonna run you just uh, into the low 90s. All right, that's it for us in the new Grand Cherokee 4 by 8 Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for the ride. <laughs> See you later. Ciao. Ciao. Here's a little bit of an update. It's been about four days since we did our last in-car recording. So I just want to mention a couple of things that I've noticed in the last few days. First of all, our average for, for almost every single day for full charge for EV range is about 30 kilometers. Uh, and that's yeah, give or take 
one or two kilometers. It's pretty solid 30 kilometers. It's been five degrees out most of the days and that's about 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, it's a little bit cool. Also, this will use quite a bit of electricity, I've noticed, for the electric heater. So even when I was parked and I was filming some of the interior shots in here, so I was parked for about 30 minutes or so with the vehicle on and I noticed it was dropping. It dropped about 8% of, of capacity uh, just sitting there without even driving. And that's mainly because I'm using the actual uh, the heat. So when it gets warmer, you'll definitely get more range out of this vehicle. And on the most part, as I mentioned, you could drive strictly on EV when you're in electric mode. However, on occasions, it will come on if you want more power, if like basically if, if you put your foot to the floor or just kind of randomly, like for instance, this morning, um, this was parked in the garage. It wasn't that cold, yet when I went to move it, it the gasoline engine kicked on right away. And uh, yeah, so it lasted probably about five, six minutes. After that, it went off and we've been in electric mode the entire time. Other times though, I've been, it's been even colder out, it's been parked outside and first thing in the morning, I start it up, it goes and defaults into electric mode and it stays there until the battery is run out. So I don't know what type of protocol they use. Um, maybe it just has a timer, it knows when it should actually run that gasoline engine. So uh, anyways, one other thing on my wish list for this Grand Cherokee though, in the surround view camera, and for the front camera, I really wish there was a, a way to have your view from your front wheels. So, you know, it'd be really handy, not just for parking, but if you're off-roading to see your front wheels, see what they're doing, see how close they are to certain objects. All the other cameras are really handy, but uh, some wheel cameras or the side view cameras specifically at those front wheels would be handy. So that's my update.